Welcome to Personal Business Growth. Uh, thank you for coming to my show and be my guest. Would you like to start by please introduce yourself and tell us who you are and what you do? Okay, well my name is Mili Ponce and if you want to find me online you can just put Mili Ponce on Google and you will find all my social media and pretty much everything about my life. <laughs> so, easy to find. Very easy to find. It's Great. Mili Ponce with I's instead of with Y. And um, well, I've been for the last 11 years yeah. helping people with uh, the digital marketing or the e-commerce. Mm -hmm. So I work with companies and individuals. I help companies to increase their sales yeah. and I help individuals to go online and yeah. create a business. Great. Okay. And how long, how long have you been doing this for? 11 years. 11 years. Great. And how did you get into this in the first place? That's a good question. <laughs> So, um, I was a computer engineer, actually okay. assistant manager. I worked for, for big corporations uh, managing their servers. Okay. Uh, a very geek. Very and techie geek. <laughs> very techie geek. <laughs> and, um, well, I, I had some financial needs uh, because I, I was taking care of my family and my parents. And unfortunately, a salary wasn't doing it for me. Mm -hmm. So... I decided that I was going to try to be an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. but I didn't know what to do. Yeah. So I started thinking, what do I do that I enjoy and I could actually make a business out of it? And I realized most of my time was spent on social media. So I thought there must be something I can do. And I started Googling people doing business with social media. And I bought a little course for $4.99 on how to sell, how to sell things on Twitter. Wow. And uh, funny enough, I followed the course. I made $500 selling stuff from home. That was a good investment. $5. Exactly. 500 It was really said, good. Let's do it again. <laughs> and uh, no, the funny thing is, uh, I spent the, five, the $500 in a barbecue, right. celebrating that I did something that I, it was never going to happen again. Mm -hmm. And that was it. But then a colleague of mine at work. Yeah said to me, my boyfriend is going to be, is going to be in a conference about how to make money online mm -hmm. with social media. Right. And I thought, okay. And she said, do you want to go? And I said, okay. So I went to the event and it was more about how to sell stuff online. Right. And the only social network that we're talking about at that time was uh, Facebook. Yeah. And, um, and I found it interesting, yes. but I couldn't understand very much what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. They were talking about marketing funnels, sales funnels, yeah. lead generation, and all these things that to me were Chinese, literally. <laughs> so um, I, I left the event, and at the door I met this young guy. And he said, have you ever, met, have you ever done money online? And I said, yeah, I made $500 on Twitter. And he never heard of Twitter. Wow. So he said, you have to stay in the event. And I said, okay. And uh, I said, I mean, I don't understand half of what they're talking about. And he said, please stay. I'm actually the organizer of the event. And I'd like you to stay because I want to have dinner with you later. And you talk to me about what you do. Wow. So he went on stage and he called me. <laughs> right. And he called me on stage. There were 800 people. I will never forget it. <clears throat> I still meet people that were around me. Yes. And they say, oh, my God, I saw you the day you went on stage and told your story. Wow. And uh, I remember when I went on stage, I couldn't hold the microphone. Of course. I was literally like so shaking. And he held it for me and he said, can you tell us just what you told me? And I said, yeah, I made $500 using Twitter. He said, what is Twitter? I said, it's a social network. And uh, he said, thank you very much. Go back. Mm -hmm. I went back and people follow me. <laughs> <laughs> and they follow me more than the other speakers because right. it, was, it sounded so simple. Yes. And uh, so he looked at me and said, okay, we have to talk about it later. And that's how my life changed completely. At dinner, he said, you seem to have this thing about getting to do this thing so simple and easy, make them sound easy. And people to see that people yeah. um, could do things that they are, they will never imagine they could do. Right. So he said, I will mentor you and I will show you how to create a business. And I will show you everything about digital marketing and uh, you just have to show me how to use Twitter. Oh, wow. That was a nice exchange. It was Fantastic. an incredible exchange. And since then, yeah, everything changed in my life from there. Wow. So 
did you switch your position as an employee directly into self-employed or you you kept the business you kept the, your job for for some time how, the, how did it work well he said to me keep your job until you're making more than your boss okay that's interesting <laughs> that's then, an interesting way of measuring yeah great so i kept my job for six months okay well that was not long <laughs> and then when i quit my job i said to my boss i love my job it was my dream job right. in fairness and uh and i said but unfortunately i have to leave because i'm already making more than you <laughs> oops <laughs> it was not very good for his self-esteem or her self-esteem no he loved it he felt really proud of me because yeah. we had a really good relationship yeah. and he was really happy he just hoped he hoped that he that that i will really achieve what i wanted to achieve and he was very really supportive and you did i guess and I did. <laughs> many times all <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> excellent so is there any do you think there is any relationship between what you were doing like so serving uh, working on servers working on computers i guess you were in a in a control room all the time on, on your own or with other colleagues doing the same thing to this world which is uh, more about uh, dealing with people and working with people even if i know that there is a, a <laughs> high level of technicality associated to what you do yes I think I was confident about my technical skills, so mm -hmm. I thought anything on the internet, I know how it works. Yeah. I mean, by then I understood about search engine optimization, how to do websites, so creating a landing page to sell something wasn't new to me. Right. Um, and the other thing is, I worked pretty much alone mm. uh, when I was in my job. So when you start a business online, you work on your own. Yeah. And many people, what they miss is that interaction with people in the office, which yeah. I never had. Because yeah. I always had a tech job and it was pretty much alone. When you, maybe when you're a software developer, you work around people. But when you're in IT, most of the time they put you at the end of the building <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with the servers. In a, in a secluded, secluded space. Exactly, where nobody can see you yes. because nobody wants to see you. <laughs> and you don't want to see them very often and you don't because want to see them. usually they come to you they're when they have a problem. <laughs> exactly. Or as soon as you walk for a coffee, everybody's like, I need help, I need help. And you're like, oh, please leave yes. me alone. Oh, well, yes. Okay. So in your transition between being an employee and becoming uh, an entrepreneur in your case, uh, was there anything holding you back? Yes, confidence. Confidence. I think when you see, I do believe anybody can achieve anything. And I think believing that actually made me more scared. Right. Because when I could see all these founders of social networks or tech people, that yeah. you see how much they have to deal with. From legal things to managing people to... So I always knew I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur because my dad was one. Mm. I grew up with an entrepreneur. Yes. But it always scared me because I could see there is trouble to deal with, risks, yes. people to deal with, and that sounded really scary to me. Yeah. Okay. So I thought it's easier to just get a job. <laughs> it is. And I guess also the old word, the Western word, is all about you you getting educated in order to get into the this complicated mechanism of the job market. So exactly. schools and university create job workers, they create employees. They don't create entrepreneurs. Very few schools actually create entrepreneurs. So yeah, and you feel it's kind of the right thing to do. Yes. And you feel jumping in the pool just to be an entrepreneur is, is really scary. It is. It is yes, really yes. scary. What is uh, What has been, if you remember, one in particular, the biggest challenge for you to become an entrepreneur? The biggest challenge, managing people. Right. Okay. I realized that, um, I realized that very fast I would need people to manage mm -hmm. because uh, digital marketing is really time consuming. Yes. And uh, that was the most challenging thing. Not just managing people, but you're kind of like a social worker too. Yeah. Because <laughs> they will come and tell you the problems and so you mm -hmm. don't know how to deal with it the right way. And the other thing is when to start employing people. Yes. That's something that for me has been the biggest, biggest learning. Yes. Because you you kind of get to this point where you can't have more clients anymore because you can't do it everything. You can't deal with them. But yeah. you still don't earn enough or maybe you do, but you feel that it's a risk. Yeah. And, uh, and you start employing people. And then it's the balance between how many people you employ and how much money you're taking out of the company to employ that people. So I think that has been the biggest challenge for me. Right. And how did you overcome? With mentors. 
Yes. So from the very beginning, because I had this mentor, yeah. um, I realized it's much faster, easier, and less scary yeah. when you talk to people that already did it. Yeah, of course. So, and you tell them, well, what do you do and how do I do it? The thing is, sometimes you feel I've learned enough so I can take the, my own decisions. Mm. That's the mistakes I've done. And then I have to go back to them and say, well, I made a mistake here. How do I solve it? <laughs> yes. And they normally tell you, I told you so. <laughs> yes. Yeah, of course. And, yeah. you know, somebody has been there before, done it before. Obviously, it's easy. It's uh, history for them. is is future for you. So, of exactly. course. Exactly. All right. So... You keep mentioning this mentor. Um, the next question is one person who had most influence in your life. It doesn't have to be this mentor, but I would be curious I'd to say know two who this people. person Okay. Two people. My dad. Okay. Somehow, subconsciously, I learned a lot from him. Right. To deal with all the problems and everything and just keep going. Yes. Uh, and my mentor. My first mentor. Which, uh, Can we say his name? Is, yeah, it's Mark Anastasi. Mark Anastasi. Okay. Yeah, you can just Google it as well. He's very yes. popular. We can put it in the show notes so people. Yeah, he might... has a New York Times bestseller, The Laptop Millionaire. Oh, is that the yeah. guy? <laughs> yes. He only mentored fully five people, and I'm one of the lucky ones. Wow. And we're very good friends now. I went to his wedding. Mark we chat and talk. Yes, of course, I know him. Yes, I know all of him. I mean, you know him. He's amazing. <laughs> yes. Okay. That's. Fascinating. I mean, I know you for a long time. Obviously, when you meet someone like yourself and we know each other, we've done work together, you don't go around asking all these questions with the, all the nitty gritty. So <laughs> I it's know, I'm to... realizing I'm saying things you didn't even know, maybe. <laughs> no, of course, of course. Very, very interesting. Okay, so was there, in, in this um, 11 years of you being an entrepreneur, has been one mistake more painful than another that yes. you remember? Definitely. Okay. Um, the first mistake, definitely not balancing employing people and expanding to expand. Okay. So passing that point. Mm -hmm. And um, I would say the worst one is when it becomes overwhelming. So one thing when you start a business is you don't know how big it's going to get. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about just money. Is because I was first a speaker, suddenly it was like people were treating me like a celebrity. Mm -hmm. And instead of, it can go two ways, I think. Is your ego growing? Yes. Or you're getting overwhelmed? Yes. And I think for me it was overwhelmed. Yes. And uh, it totally made me lose a bit my way. Mm. Because I thought, do I want to be that? Or do I want to be an entrepreneur? Or do I want to be... So I think my biggest mistake was not knowing how to control and to psychologically mm -hmm. control that path. Because... It is pretty much like being an actor. Yes. So I was having dinner with all the speakers, with famous people. Uh, I mean, I met personally Tony Robbins, Richard Brands, and everybody. And when you're actually having dinner with these people or you're talking to these people and you're like newbie <laughs> into it, it's... You mentioned you were in a dinner with Richard Branson as well. And Tony Robbins and uh, some celebrities. <laughs> yes. Donald Trump as well? Um, no, 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 Clinton. Clinton, wow. And, so uh, and what, I, was it the same dinner or different dinners, different these people? No, it was actually it was a big dinner from the organizers of the event. Right. Where they invited all these people and we had the chance to just sit with them and have dinner. Wow. I mean, we were part of the speakers with them too. So it was so weird because people would treat them like celebrities, but then come to us as well. And you're like... If you are in there, you, are, you <laughs> must be a celebrity of some kind. I know. And I had dinner with um, Benedict Cumberbatch. Yes. Actually, just two of us because nobody recognized him. And I loved Sherlock Holmes. Yes. So yes. I came and said to him, oh my God, you're Sherlock Holmes. And he was like, uh, but it's Goomba Butch. And he said, oh, sit down. And yeah, we had dinner. It was amazing. Yeah. So, but all that kind of like when you go home, yeah. you think what's going on in my life, you know? Yes. And I think I didn't know how to balance that because I started trying to catch up with them when I wasn't earning like them. Yes. But it's because you get invited. You get invited to holidays. You get invited to, to private planes, to things like that. And you're like, can yeah. I really afford this? I'm still starting. Yeah. So I think that's what happened to actors when they suddenly become huge. Yeah. And they... Then they crash. Yeah, you Many crash. Because yeah. you try to keep up with the people you go around. And yeah. It's, yeah. And I mean, you lose it. You most, lose the... Most people become celebrities. Uh, 
uh, nowadays there is a, there is a, an entire class of psychologists and mentors that work with these people exactly to help them to cope with the situation because some people have made it to celebrities in the 60s and the 70s and they cope with it but other people just go berserk and they become yeah. then they then is never enough they become drug addicts they do all sorts of things just because they And they spend more control. than they make yeah they do and yes. uh, and I see it with many many famous speakers I mean for me, it was so much that I decided to just come home and just... That's how I started my agency. I thought, I just want to go to Cambridge and do a little agency and just start all over again. Yes. <laughs> and forget about all this. Which I think it was kind of a mistake because I could have used that if mm. I knew how yeah, 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 yeah. to actually grow my business much faster. Yeah. But it was just like, I just want to forget about sure. it. Sure. Wow. Um, would you change anything in your entrepreneurial past in terms of either things you've done or mistakes to avoid so things you've done and you wouldn't have you should you wouldn't do or mistakes to avoid no i everything I, i'm a believer that everything that happens in your life is to make you grow yeah and to make you learn yes because i think you need it mm. so if you were back go back and do everything the right way you don't have much to learn and we all have to learn. So, no, I don't regret anything. Great. <laughs> what has been your proudest moment uh, in this um, experience of 11 years so far? Um, the first time, um, well, my mentor, he wanted to retire. Yes. And I was only six months doing this. Mm. And he said, could you replace me as a speaker in all the conferences I speak? That's a lot and of I was like, I said to him, I've never... I mean, I was shy. I'm still shy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I never spoke in public. And I said to him, why do you want me to do it? You know, lots of people. And he said, I love your story. And uh, you're a people person. And I think you can do it. So he said, I'll train you to do it. And you do it. So he trained me. I remember he said, you have to say yes and not change your mind. And I remember where I was at that moment. And I was like, can I do this? But when I have a fear, I always think I have to do it because if I fear it, it's always going to limit me. So I said, I'll do it. And after six months, I went to Australia mm. and I spoke in front of about a thousand people. But the organizer said to me, well, you're new and I don't care if you're replacing Mark and Stasi. You have to prove me right. that you can do something exceptional to become part of. Because it was an organization that took you all around the world, yes, yes, yes. which was the World Intern Summit. Mm. And, uh, and he said, I want you to teach people something today mm -hmm. that they can actually earn money online and tomorrow they have to be your testimonial. So he gave, he gave me two no speakers. Pressure. <laughs> no pressure. So I planned something that I didn't know if it was going to work. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, this is it, me in or out. And, um, and he said, and you have to teach people how to do lead generation and do it for us in public. Wow. So he said, I want you to get 2000 leads in 24 hours. And I was like, I thought it was impossible. But I said, yeah, I'll do it. I thought all night and uh, I put a plan and somehow it happened. We actually had 2091 people wow. in the list that we built. And the next day we have four testimonials, which most of them are in my Facebook page. Mm. Uh, that they said, I tried just one strategy Milly shared and, and I made so, uh, sales on Twitter, which was amazing because that got me into the world of the summit. And uh, yeah, and I did speak in Australia and New Zealand and places I never even thought I was going to be. Wow. But and that then was. I know you were going to China at some point quite often. You had the... Yes, I think oh, well, I've been everywhere in China, Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia, all around Europe. <laughs> wow. Amazing but um, the day I was in front of all that thousand people speaking for first time ever, I didn't practice before. Mm. I had training, but just my mentor and me. Yeah, yeah. I think Big that day I it? felt really proud of me. I did. Because <laughs> I didn't pass out. <laughs> Amazing. Do you feel you have always been an entrepreneur or there was skill you had to learn to become one? No, I don't think I was always an entrepreneur. First, because I was very unconfident. I was bullied at school. Mm. Um... But funny enough, most entrepreneurs have been bullied at school, mm. which is, yeah, I think you try to overcome. Yes. You know, and, uh, and it's like, I know I can do better. I just 
can't show it in school. <laughs> you know, you're not yes. young. You're not old enough. Yeah, I, I guess school is a. There's a big debate. Um, I know Gary Vaynerchuk keep talking about it. I mean, I think school is a good institution in general. The fact is, um, I've seen you know my daughter, for example, one of my daughters, she couldn't cope with the school system for the first few years, and now she's flourishing. So I think school works well if your mind can can be molded into what the school expects. That is, give you notion. You show them that you learn these notions and you move on. But not every mind is I like think it's this. maturing too. Yes. We all mature different. I think I matured yes. at 25. Okay. <laughs> I was a kid until then. I yeah. didn't care that much. And at 25 I thought, I need to be something. Yeah. And I need to... I did it to prove other people, but to prove yeah. it to myself more than anything. That I could do anything. And, uh, and I learned a lot indirectly from my dad. Because I grew up with him. And the great thing is... He used to take me to meetings mm. and he used to give me his office yeah. and I saw exactly how he dealt with business, with business partners. Mm. I had it in front of me all the time, but I could not remember moment. it. But somehow when I read books about entrepreneurship, it was all there. Yeah. I was like, my dad did this, my dad did that. And it was all there. I just couldn't access it easily in my memories. So. Fascinating. <laughs> really good. Okay. Can you list maybe a few milestones that you can identify over this eight, 11 years of, of growth from starting your first entrepreneurial <laughs> venture till now your success? Um, I'd say the first one was this, the, this type of employing people. Mm. When you take the decision, I'm going to grow, which is what most people fear. Yeah. The next one was when I could actually go to a Regis office and say, I want all these offices for me. Okay. <laughs> that was, actually, that was a day. I actually had a dream. Renting <laughs> physical space. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And in such a thing like Regis, which is so expensive. Yes. Um, and the third one was when, um, it, it's quite funny when actually somebody came to me mm -hmm. and said, can I have an autograph? Oh, and I wow. was like, what? But I didn't write that book. She, li she literally took any book and she said, I just want your autograph. Because when you're famous, I want to say I have it. <laughs> and I thought... So she was a speculative investment on your yeah. autograph. So that was, that was quite cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Personal question for you. Do you think more people should become entrepreneurs? I think it's not for everybody. Okay. I think um, some people say that anyone can learn to be entrepreneurs. I know anyone can learn to be entrepreneurs. So everyone could be one, but I don't think everyone can be happy being no. one. No, the, for me, it's more the question, do you think we need to more, more people to take their own future in their hands in terms of becoming running their own business rather than being members of a large organization? This is more okay, the, yeah. the, the direction. Um, in that way, I think, yes. Because I think the more entrepreneurs there are, the more jobs there are. Mm -hmm. So I think if more people that even had the idea... I think if they think, I love to be an entrepreneur, but mm -hmm. I'm afraid. Yeah. That's the person that has to become an entrepreneur right. with the help of someone. Because it's in that person to, yeah. to want to be one. Yes. And I think there are loads of people like that that never become entrepreneurs. And that could solve so many financial problems in in the country hmm. because we keep thinking on where do we put people that are unemployed where well, if there were more companies there were less people unemployed yeah so right. i do think it's a solution to unemployment now a few questions about your personal personal preferences and per personal direction <laughs> in, in the way you run your business so for example <laughs> the first question i know you mentioned you commented before <laughs> What is your relationship with patience when it's a matter of running a business or your business and stuff? If you ask my family, they will say, I don't even know what patience means. <laughs> <laughs> I have none. But that doesn't mean I, I don't have patience with people and I scream at them or treat right. them bad. No, I actually take it to myself and go for a drink or something. But, uh, <laughs> but patience is something that I find 50% bad and 50% good. Because mm. I have no patience to achieve either. Mm. So when I have an idea, I want to achieve it and I want to achieve it as fast as possible. Right. And that helps me a lot because 
one thing in my life is I've achieved most things I wanted in my life mm-hmm. and I want to keep on achieving. And if you wait, like most people wait for the right time. There is never. There's never. And because I have no patience, I can't wait, even if there right. was one. <laughs> but uh, you can get extra stress if you're not patient. Yeah. So I think I am a person that inside can get really stressed. Mm. And I think that's my lack of patience. So I think it's 50-50. Okay. That's a very, very interesting answer. Um, what is instead the relationship with consistency in terms of running a business? Consistency. Um, I am very consistent on what I want and where I want the business to get. Mm. So nothing puts me back. I don't give up on anything. Mm. So I'm consistent on how I want things to be and how and where they have to get. Yeah. Now, I don't think I have a good relationship with consistency at home in my right. personal life. Yeah. Because my... For me, my professional life is number one. Mm. So if I have to change my personal life to mm. achieve professionally, then I become completely inconsistent at home, but consistent at work. All right. So the, the consistency applied to your business, you keep doing the right things, you keep repeat, repeating. Because very often, a lot of people try something and because they are inconsistent, they try something, it doesn't really work and they just give up. And that's where a lot of people... A lot of businesses fail because of lack of consistency, because you have to keep doing it, push through all the obstacles, all the hurdles, and then eventually it works. I think there's a skill that most people miss when they become entrepreneurs, and it's yeah. stubbornness. Yes. I am a very stubborn person. Right. <laughs> and most socially, most people say that's, that's a bad thing in me, it's actually mm. stubbornness, but mm. I think in business is the best you can have. Yeah. Because I just don't know how to give up. Yeah. So I will keep on trying until I break the wall that is in front of me. Great. That sounds, that's one of the best answers I <laughs> receive on this. Um, what is your relationship with adaptability and quick changing of direction when we're talking about business? I think when you are somebody that came from a completely different country, diff- completely different mm-hmm. culture, and I've done this few times because I've lived in Spain, I've lived in the US, I've lived here. Uh, I've lived in Germany, so I think when you have had that experience from very young, yeah, then you adapt to anything. Because mm. I didn't speak English when I came to England, I can adapt to languages. People say to me, "Could you just move to Japan tomorrow and get a job and do something?" I definitely know I can, <laughs> because I've gone through so much yeah. adapting that I think, and I think it's a good thing because yeah. we get so limited by I don't speak the language, I don't know the culture that I don't actually see how is that a problem. Yeah. It's actually really interesting to learn all the cultures. It's a challenge, yeah. It is, and it's an interesting one. Yeah, great. Okay, now talking about personally, yourself, do you have a daily, we say personally, but still related to your business. I'm not uh, digging into your personal <laughs> life, but as far as business is concerned, do you have a daily or weekly routine about what you do for your business on, I mean, on a Monday or in a Tuesday afternoon? I know people may expect me to say yes, <laughs> but I don't have routines because I actually don't like routines. Okay, that's great. Yeah, I... I interesting. <laughs> okay, so no daily routine, no morning routine. You just get up in the morning and see what's I sleep what's until going. I want to sleep. Right. Because if I force myself to wake up, yes. then I can't concentrate on work. I'm tired or I'm just not ready. Okay. So I let myself sleep until whenever and okay. then I start working. And so because of that, do you normally wake up at different time every day or is it more or less the same time every day? I've never been a morning person. And even though I read so much and I learned so much from entrepreneurs that you have yeah. to wake up early in the morning. Yeah. I've tried it, but I don't think everybody, actually our body works the same way for everyone. I can stay awake until 2, 3 in the morning, 4 in the morning, or not sleep. Mm-hmm. But I cannot work at the early in the morning. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's, yeah. There are people that like evenings, people that like mornings, people like afternoons. Yeah. It's, it's um, yeah, there's no right or wrong answer here. I'm just trying to see um, if there is a pattern among all the people I'm interviewing about what, what makes them more successful than others. Um, do you do any kind of exercise? And if so, when <laughs> often? Um, I think because when I was young, I was really into into sports. Mm. So I've played professionally tennis. Did you? Yeah, oh, a few oh, cups. I, <laughs> I didn't. Know. I've, I've, uh, yeah, I have uh, played for Peru 
in uh, South American championships wow. in tennis. <laughs> wow. um, I've played internationally in table tennis. Wow. Uh, and I used to be a personal trainer and I used to teach aerobics. Wow. <laughs> aerobics don't exist anywhere anyway, but so uh, yeah, I was I was doing literally all day mm. sports and when I had some free time I'll do sports. Yeah. And I think because I was so much into it, when I came to England, I wanted to do that. But it was, for somebody that just arrived to England, it's really expensive to go to the gym or to do anything yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. So I, uh, I kind of like got demotivated by, well, first I had to work and study. Sure. I had to work 24 hours sometimes. So uh, I got demotivated. And then the thing is, I have in my mind that if I don't do it 100%, I don't do it, which is really wrong. Yeah. Because I always think, okay, I'm going to go two hours a day, every day to the gym, or I don't do it. It just doesn't happen. So I think the point that my experience in sports is so intense, Yeah. I don't know how to deal with sports in a very light way. <laughs> yes. I see. Wow. Yeah, well, you know, discovered something else. I didn't know you're a <laughs> champion, a tennis champion. Wow. So, two more things. Um, as far as your business is concerned, where do you see yourself in the next three years? I hope in three years I can start doing what I always wanted to do and my plan was. And I want to be, it sounds quite catchy the word, but a serial entrepreneur. I, my dream is to have many businesses, mm. hopefully not managed by me all, <laughs> yes. and, um, and become an investor. So in three years, I hope I have a few businesses that I'm running and mm. uh, I'm on my way to one day maybe become an investor. Right. Sounds a very neat and very clear plan. Now, the last question is very much uh, uh, about uh, sharing uh, your, your suggestions and advice to other people who are already entre entrepreneurs or they are planning to become entrepreneurs, they are thinking about starting a business. So, if there was one piece of advice you could give, what would it be? It would be... Um to do a bit of personal development, which it's training your mindset. Mm. Um, that's what I did before I started anything. Before I even looked for the Twitter course, yeah. I did loads of personal development. So I did Tony Robbins, mm -hmm. uh, UPW. Yeah. I did uh, T. Hafecker, Millionaire Intensive, uh, Martini's courses. So I had a lot of personal development uh, mentors. Mm. And, uh, and I worked really like almost for a year only on my confidence. Right. I think, personally, I think everything is on your confidence. If you're a confident person, yes. And more than confident person, you know, people see people that talk about mindset, yes, like a cult. Mm. No, no, no. I understand. <laughs> and I always say, if it's a cult, it's great because it's teaching you to believe in yourself. Right. So I have nothing against religions. I believe in God. Yes. But I love to be able to believe in myself. Mm -hmm. And that's what personal development does. It's mainly make you believe that you are capable of anything. And I think if you don't believe that, you will fail in business. Because you will think this is my fault. I wasn't meant to do this. I'm not prepared to be an entrepreneur. I'm not meant to be. When you are confident, you don't have that. I never went in my mind that. I was sure that... I could do it. And if I make a mistake, well, I'm learning. <laughs> so, yeah, no, absolutely. But I, it took a lot of learning. I was, I was not suddenly confident. Yes. So, improve yourself before you start your business. So you're going to feel more confident. You can definitely believe you If can. you're a shy person, I would suggest you've got to work on your confidence first before yes. even going into entrepreneurship. Fantastic. Millie, it has been a fascinating experience for me, also because as I know for years, but I learned so much new, so many new things about you today. So I should interview pleased. you one day, so I learned Yes, that. by all means, <laughs> I'm happy to reciprocate at some point. So I would like to thank you very much for attending and for being here today, for giving me your time to answer these questions and for the people that are listening and watching the video. And also, I would like to wish you all the best for your future. Thank you. Thank you.